welcome back to my channel once again. I'm going to show you a couple of licks today, but I mainly want to talk about sound, not volume. Sound, getting the, the, the best sound that your instrument is capable of producing. Because I see so many uh, people, you know, muting their instrument in some way or distracting the sound from what it's ca capable of. And they don't even know they're doing it. Usually they don't even know that, you know, it's happening. Uh, I'm mainly, of course, focusing on acoustic guitar, but this uh, probably works with other acoustic instruments like mandolins and, and uh, anything that uh, I don't think it would affect a banjo much because they're already extremely piercing. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'll, I'll show you a couple of licks later. Right now, I want to talk to you about some of this sound and uh, show you ways to get the most out of yours. So of course, new strings is always a plus. You know, these are these are several days old now, but I think it still sounds pretty fair. One thing, I, this, a lot of this stuff I've covered in previous videos already. If you have seen those, I apologize. If not, then uh, yeah, this may help you in some way uh, to get the better sound from your guitar or whatever instrument you play. This is the most important area on this. Well, actually, the, the sound board, they call it, the top on a guitar is. But this is as important. You should never touch these pins or the saddle or the bridge. You should never ever touch those while you're playing. And of course, like I say, new strings is always a plus. I try to keep fairly new. I don't like to play much over a week on a set of strings. Uh, that's playing quite a bit usually throughout that week. So anyway, uh, you don't ever want to touch pins. Don't want to touch the saddle or the bridge. and. You know, you got to touch the top, obviously. Your arm, whether it be your arm or if you anchor a finger or your hand or whatever, you know, people do it differently. Uh, the point, the goal is to try not to touch the top as, you know, as least as you can. Touch it as least as you can. If you remember Doc Watson, a lot of guitars, he had a, uh, like a banjo armrest mounted on some of his guitars right here. And that's what that was for. That was to keep his arm off of that top, you know, to get the better sound out of the guitar to make it louder. Uh, and not just louder. I mean, you know, volume's good, but quality sound is better. And you can mic that and, and get the volume. Um, some guitars are more sensitive than others. Some you can just touch, you know, the top anywhere as you play. And this guitar's like that. I can hear... I can hear a difference just raising my fingers off from the board as opposed to touching it. I don't know if the camera will get that or not. Here's an idea of what I mean. If you can hear that. never touch you know touch it as little as possible that's the idea a lot of people anchors a finger you know that's you got to do what you got to do you know what I mean uh, some people can play without ever touching the, you know with their hand or fingers they don't even use an anchor I, I could, never could do that but uh, You don't want to touch, you know, any harder or any more than you can get by with. Okay, something I recently learned, um, and I have learned also that most guitar players don't even know this. Uh, I learned it from Tony Rice. I, I don't know why Tony never mentioned it on any of his instruction tapes or of course, they wasn't talking about improving your sound. They were teaching guitar, so I can kind of understand. Anyway, you see so many guitar players with capos. When they're not using them, they shove them behind the nut up here. I, I did it myself until I, I learned this. Uh, 
you should try this with new strings. Have fresh strings on. Have your capo on where you always keep it if you're one of those people that do. And I'm betting you are if you use a capo much. Uh, put new strings on. Put your capo up here. Tune it all up. Play it. And I mean play it for like, you know, 30 or 40 minutes or something with the capo shoved above the nut like you do. Then take that capo off and lay it down and play your guitar without it. And listen to the difference it makes. I always wondered why Tony uh, Rice never did that. If, if you watch, he always stuck his capo in his pocket or pulled it out of his pocket when he needed he never You never see Tony playing with a capo up here. Well, I know why now, because it uh, tremendously kills your guitar volume and, and depth sound and uh, quality sound and, you know, just it's amazing at the difference that it will make. Now this uh, too varies on guitars. Some guitars, you know, you can just touch the top and let off and you can hear a difference like this. Other ones you have to, you can touch them pretty hard and let off and hear, you know, very little bit of difference, if any. And this is the same thing. Some of them you may not notice it as much as others, but I guarantee you, you will hear a much uh, mellower, sweeter tone come out of your guitar without that capo shoved above the neck up here, the nut, I mean. Another thing of importance, I think, if you haven't tried a tusk saddle and a tusk nut, or even just one of them or the other by itself, uh, you, you owe it to yourself to try one of those out, or both. Um, I have a tusk saddle in this guitar, and it uh, really, really doubled the volume of the thing. Uh, some of you might not like that. It, it also uh, it kind of gives it a sharper, more trebly sound. It didn't seem to lose anything on the bass. It gained on bass, too. It's just like everything it had went up. A step uh, with the tusk. Yeah, you know, you can mess. You may not like that, but I think you owe it to yourself probably to try it because I didn't think I would like it the first two or three days. But uh, you know, I, I wouldn't go back to plastic. Certainly not. And uh, I have to hesitate about going back to bone. Uh, so that's another thing you can experiment with and try if you want to see. You know what. Uh, get the most out of your guitar it's possibly capable of producing and uh, a lot of people including myself you know, want to do that you know another important factor is uh, your pick the type of pick that you use especially on acoustic guitars well probably on mandolins too um, it affects the sound of the instrument the guitar uh, always oh, it's an extreme difference <laughs> I have a blue chip pick. I use a blue chip. I recently started using these and uh, I know everyone can't afford them but I would highly recommend them. I use the TD80. It's a two millimeter pick. It's a, it's like a piece of steel man. I've been playing with it for a couple of weeks, three weeks or so and it's not showing a scratch of wear yet. Um, but I'm going to show you. This is a plastic Dunlop pick, and this is uh, this is the blue chip I'm ha I have right here. Hopefully, you can hear the difference in these. This is the blue chip. Here's the plastic Dunlop pick. It's two millimeters, also. You can hear, I can hear it here, the blue chips uh, much, it punches out there a lot better. And here's the Dunlop. in rhythm
between these picks than I can picking with them. But uh, it's, there's certainly a big difference in both of them. Here is the blue chip. You get a lot more volume with the blue chip. But this one sounds bassier. So, uh, you know, that's another thing. To, it, you don't have to have a blue chip pick to sound good. I really like the sound of this plastic Dunlop pick. Um, I used the, this is what I used before I went to blue chip, and I just wore out so many of them so fast. And I like for my pick to feel the same every time I play. And I couldn't do that with this unless I had a new one all the time. Almost all the time. Anyway, I'll review the blue chip pick some other time. Right now, I'm uh, talking about sound. And that's another way to... Uh, th uh, that's another thing that will certainly change the sound of your guitar a whole lot. Depending on what kind of pick you actually uh, decide on and use. Uh, another thing I uh, wanted to make mention about uh, it's a, it makes a difference in the sound of your guitar if you have skin against it or clothing like a long sleeve shirt. Uh, if you'll notice, I don't think you'll ever find a picture or a video of Tony Rice playing the guitar with a short sleeve shirt on. Uh, that man gets all, as you know, all the sound in a in a guitar out, and he knows he's he's educated on how to do that. Not using that capo or leaving it above the nut is one thing, but but do notice you'll never see a you'll never see Tony. I I can never find any pictures of him playing the guitar with a short sleeve shirt on because cloth doesn't take sound away, quality away, like, you know, just your skin would, and I'm sure he learned that, probably why he never wore a, shirt, a short sleeve shirt when he played, but I just wanted to make mention of that, because every little tiny thing that you can do, you know, will improve everything I'm telling you here, if you do one of them, you'll hear a difference, if you do them all, you will, I think you might be amazed at how good your guitar really does sound. And what you know, what it's capable of. New strings, I can't say it enough, man. You, you know, if you want that sound every time, everything that it's got to give. Okay, uh, I promised you a couple of licks, so uh, let's get right into that. I hope that some of the pointers there will help some of you, and I, I really urge you to try one or all or a few of those and see what they do for your guitar. I think you'll be very happy and damn that light's bright. <laughs> okay, so um, the, the lick is it's in G. I'll do that uh, slower and try to break it up in well let me show you how it goes in a song first a, a tune if you spit all that shit in the a song uh, let me think fit that into uh, a lot of different uh, songs, tunes, or whatever. So let me get zoomed in here and reset, and I'll uh, show it to you and explain it better. Okay, you're coming down here to the 10th fret with your pinky on the first string. Let me do it slow for you. Alright. First string. You're coming down
down here to the first string, 10th fret, with your pinky. That's just 10, 8, 9, or 7, I'm sorry. Then on the second string, 10th fret, to the 8th fret. So you have, then you walk the second string up. On the first string, you come back to the 6th fret. Let's see. Yeah, the sixth fret. You're just walking the first string on the sixth and seventh fret, then back to the second string on the tenth fret. the uh, seventh fret, second string, then third string on the ninth, walking back to the seventh. Uh, that last part was the fourth string. When you walk back on the third, Fourth string on the eighth, ninth, and then the third string open. So it's yeah. There you go. That's one. Actually, while we're down here in this area, instead of showing you another lick, I'll show you an exercise. I learned this from the internet. I can't remember who or where, but I got it from YouTube actually. And it's a good little exercise. It sounds kind of funky and it's fun to do. And uh, I'll just do it for you first and then we'll try to break it down. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're thinking. It's pretty weird, but it's cool to play. It's fun to play with. Anyway, it starts at the first string. I'll explain it briefly. And then I'll play it in slow segments that you can break apart or pause the video in between. It starts the first string at the 7th fret, walks up to the 8th. Then the second string on the 7th uh, fret. Then the first string to the 9th fret. And the second string to the 8th. Um, string on the seventh fret. And let me just break it in segments for you. It would be much easier than trying to explain each note. I'm coming up on the ninth fret here with the sixth string and it goes back to the eighth fret and starts backwards the whole thing we just played. segments. thing to do you get a lot of weird looks when you play that around hold on somebody asked me the other day for a lick going from G to D or from the one to the five chord um, there's so many of them I guess if I was playing down here in this area and needed to use that I would use this one rather than the one up here or you know if you're picking up here uh, naturally you'd want to do it up here you know anyway the lick 
is simple, it's straight ahead. That'll put you from it'll also put you from C to D. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do about anything. Uh, let's see. That's one, a common one. few licks in D. Coming out of D to G is a pretty common one. I think banjo players use that a lot. Um, licks in D. I've been asked a lot about that. You have a D chord right here, so I'm just barring it sort of and playing out of uh, that position. You have a D chord here, you can move up to and play. I'll do this slow. It's a, this is another one uh, coming from D to G. You, uh, uh, for those of you that wanted uh, licks in D and ways to work into the chord, there that's uh, dedicated to you. Uh, I'm not going to break it down and show you every single note. Uh, you can pause the video in between, uh, you know, and pick up notes as you go. Hold on. Okay, one more little scale, funky scale for you advanced heads out there. I'm not going to break this one apart so much or even show you up close. I'm just going to show it to you. It's I'm doing it in E. That's really too fast. Just uh, you could build solos from that. I have before. Uh, if you want to do it in D, well, but anyway, it's just a scale. It's not a, really a lick or a riff or anything like that. Even it's just a, it's a funky scale that someone showed me one time. I'm sliding on the first and second strings from the 11th to 12th fret, and then it just, uh, I'll break that, I'll do that in segments for you. you a bunch of tips and a bunch of, uh, well not a bunch, but uh, some tips and some a few uh, little things to work on, riffs, and uh, hopefully so that stuff will help someone out there. Anyways, thanks again. I appreciate every one of you guys. Uh, take care of yourselves. Cheers.